a lot of fanfare, the whole idea of a grand opposition uni unity against the BJP. In fact, the highlight of it was the swearing in ceremony in Karnataka in the middle of last year when several opposition leaders took to the stage together, which included arch rivals like Mayavati and Akhilesh Yadav, which included arch rivals like Mamata Banerjee of the Trinamool Congress and the left parties. The Congress was looking like the fulcrum which was bringing together all these motley group of parties together. However, now several months down the line, fault lines have emerged. All these smaller opposition parties seem to be on different planes, seem to be talking in different languages. Uh, K KCR, who is the head of TRS, who is the chief minister of Telangana, in fact, is spearheading separate efforts. Chandra Babu Naidu from Andhra Pradesh is spearheading separate efforts. Mamata Banerjee now, in fact, is holding this rally on the 19th of this month for which she's invited several uh, opposition leaders. So everybody seems to be talking in their own, for their own interests, in their own language. This has been most glaring in the case of SP and BSP in Uttar Pradesh, who decided to form an alliance but leave out the Congress. So Congress effectively is not part of this entire great idea of Gadbandan in the biggest state of the country, which is Uttar Pradesh, which sends out 80 people to the Lok Sabha. So has this really fizzled out? Does it look like the Narendra Modi and the BJP would have a free run from now on? This is the question we are taking today. Please do send in your questions. Please do send in your comments. I'd be very happy to discuss them as we go along. Well, effectively at this point, what has happened is that the fact that the opposition looks so splintered, as I said, unlike maybe six, seven months ago, when they all looked far more cohesive, when they all looked far more together, this means that it has given the BJP this much needed fodder to go to the electorate with and to talk to the electorate about how unstable, how unreliable and how non-cohesive this entire opposition, uh, united opposition effort is. How this opposition really is more of an opportunistic coming together of parties who are not even together, who are fighting among themselves about who the leader would be, who, who would spearhead this entire initiative. So this has given the BJP a talking point ahead of elections. And we already see that. We see that in the BJP's recently concluded national convention, this entire Gadbandhan, Maha Gadbandhan, was a target on the second day. Um, it was a part of the political resolution. Amit Shah spoke about it. Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about it. Nitin Gadkari, who's former party president and senior minister, spoke about it. Hence, we can see the BJP trying to capitalize on what seems like a splintered, broken, fragmented opposition. But to say the game is over for the opposition, but to say that it can, does not mean that they would sort of come together in a more cohesive fashion ahead of 2019 would be a bit early. We know there is time to go and we know in Indian politics each day really has, an, it has its own lifetime, has its own lifespan and there is a lot that remains. We also have to see what role the Congress plays because it's not, it looks difficult to have a front which is minus the BJP and minus the Congress. So the Congress would have to play a slightly more proactive role and would have to some way compromise its interests and be able to give a little bit to the allies to ensure that there is some platform that is created against the BJP. I have some questions already, so let me begin by uh, taking them. There is a question from MS which says, what are the prospective options if the Congress wins 140 plus seats like it did in 2004? Well, if a single bloc, which is not the BJP, and in this case perhaps would have to, of course, be the Congress, wins anything above 120, this is a battle for the BJP. Uh, the opposition parties would then get together, seeing that there is a fulcrum, seeing that there's an opportunity to put the BJP down, to pull the BJP down and to ensure there is an opposition government, would try and come together to, to sort of uh, make a post-poll alliance, even if there was no pre-poll alliance among these parties. Having said that, this would also depend on the number of seats the BJP gets. Because if the BJP still emerges as a single largest party with a reasonable number of seats, then a lot of these allies who are now in this anti-BJP camp may shift sides. We know there are many neutral parties. Uh, the BJD, for instance, is a neutral party. We don't know which way the BSP goes, although, of course, right now it's contesting with the SP. Uh, there are parties in the South which we don't know whether they would want to ally with the BJP in a situation, in a scenario like that. So, hence, it's difficult to say what would happen. But if, if what you are saying happens, it's going to be anybody's name, game, and I think it will be advantage opposition if the Congress manages to win about 150-odd seats. Suman Devi says... Are the regional parties going to dominate the forthcoming elections over the two major national players? 
um, the regional parties are going to dominate elections in their respective regions. See, we have to understand that the problem with these regional parties is their very, very limited domain, very, very li limited geographical uh, domain and very limited appeal. So, for instance, the Trinamool Congress is limited to West Bengal. It does not have a pan-India appeal. For instance, a TRS is limited to Telangana. It again does not have a pan-India appeal. Or, for instance, even Samajwadi Party, for that matter, may have limited appeal in other uh, the, other regions of the central of the Hindi heartland, but is mainly restricted to Uttar Pradesh. Hence, it's not possible for the regional parties to dom to dominate national polls. Also, because the BJP is doing all it can to push forth Narendra Modi as the leader who is the Mesa, who, who is going to save the country, who is going to sort of, you know, resurrect uh, politics in this country. And he is going to dominate the national elections. And to match up to that, the Congress is pushing forth an aggressive Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi has been rebranded as someone who is taking on Narendra Modi, who is questioning him, who is uh, who's calling out the corruption, as it were, which, which is what the Congress claims. Hence, this is going to be dominated by national parties. More than parties, this election is going to be dominated by personalities. And that is what Narendra Modi has made politics all about. He's made it about personalities, and which is why Rahul Gandhi, as I said, has had to rebrand himself and has had to emerge as a different politician. So regional parties would dominate elections in their respective regions, and it would also depend on which alliance they're a part of. But largely, it will be national parties who will, be, uh, who will head the discourse, as it were. Abhishek says... After CAB 2016 and ruckus in, well, I think that means a citizenship amendment bill, and ruckus in Northeast, can Congress get new allies in the Northeast? Can a a a AGP join hands with Congress? And what can happen in Jharkhand? Uh, well, that's a good question, Abhishek. Yes, the BJP is on slightly weak footing in the Northeast. It has lost an ally in Assam. But I think the BJP's game is simple as far as Assam is concerned. Use it to send a message to the rest of the country. They are willing to sacrifice a few seats in Assam. But what they want to do is send out this message of aggressive Hindutva, of being some a party which stands up for Hindus through the Citizenship Amendment Bill to the rest of the country. So it wants to polarize the other parts of the country, particularly the Hindi heartland, particularly the western part of the country, where it hopes to be able to gain from this. Um, can AGP join hands with the Congress? Well, as of now, you know, in fact, the print did a story about how the Congress is willing. Uh, the Congress is saying that if the AGP wants to talk to us, we'll be very happy. But the AGP is not interested just yet. AGP has had a very different trajectory of politics. It started its politics and it's maintained its politics in a very, very strong regional Ahomiya stance, which is not what the Congress is far more moderate. So it will be difficult for the two to reconcile the politics. It's difficult for the AGP and Congress to forge an alliance and convince the electorate about that alliance. There's a question from Milind. Uh, was it there in first place? Wasn't it known that few parties can't go together? Well, I suppose you mean, was the opposition unity there? No, there wasn't really. As I said, there was no defined um, united front. It was more of a fluid situation where they were all weighing their uh, options, where they were all looking at what would benefit them and what would benefit, uh, you know, how they can bring the BJP down. So uh, you're right, there was no such decisive, decided, um, union of these opposition parties. However, they were in talks in that one stage in Karnataka, which I've mentioned earlier, where you saw opposition parties and leaders of all hues come together, sent out a very strong message that the opposition may be serious, may want to, may in fact set aside their differences and come together. But as I said, now it seems like things are unraveling a little bit, unfolding a little bit for the opposition, and uh, splintering is happening in, in that whole concept of Grand Alliance. Uh, why would uh, pan-Indian parties like BSP, Samajwadi Party and RJD align with Brahmin Congress, which was not ready to give even 10 seats for BSP in 2017 Gujarat election, 40 seats in Madhya Pradesh in Rajasthan election? Well, that is a very valid question. And in fact, that is the re reason why the BSP and SP have been so miffed with the Congress. Uh, the BSP wanted some seats in Chhattisgarh, um, Madhya Pradesh as well as Rajasthan. The Congress was reluctant. Uh, after the Congress came to power, it was reluctant to give any ministerial berths to the Samajwadi Party MLAs. So it has also played a bit of a spoiled sport as far as this entire concept of a grand alliance is concerned. It has played the big brother, which, as I said, seems to have upset the SP and BSP, and which is exactly why in UP they were very clear that they are willing to leave aside just two seats for the Congress, which is Rai Bareilly and Abeti, which are there, which are the Gandhi families. Um, strongholds. So what the Congress did to them in these states, these uh, parties has have vanished to, to the Congress in UP, where now the Congress is saying that it will fight all 80 seats on its own. 
So clearly, yes, the fact that the Congress was not willing to accommodate has come back to harm it a little bit, at least in the state which I said sends out 80 MPs to the Lok Sabha. There is a question from Shiva, can Modi get 280 plus again for the BJP? How much percentage of chances of this result now? Well, Shiva, unfortunately, my craft doesn't quite teach me to predict elections. I'm neither a sophologist nor an astrologer. It is also too early. I can just convey the sense on the ground. So to the, whether Modi can get 280 plus is a very, very tough, um, and a tough sort of, you know, but I can't take that call as of now. But what I can tell you is that the BJP had maxed out in many states in the 2014 elections. Rajasthan had won all the seats. For instance, Uttar Pradesh had won 71 of the 80 seats. That's huge. So in, several, in Madhya Pradesh had won 29 of the 30 seats. So it's really, it maxed out in all states. It could suffer some losses in these states. So whether it can re regain ta retain that tally by compensating through other states, newer states, whether it's West Bengal, Larissa, some states in the south, or uh, the 25 seats in the northeast to some extent, that is what will be the deciding factor about where the BJP really stands. And UP is going to be critical to the BJP. 80 seats is no joke and 71. So clearly that is what had catapulted BJP past the magic figure in 2014. How it performs in UP will be absolutely critical to the fortunes of the BJP. Anupam says, what is the forecast of BJP seats in 2019? Anupam, I think I just answered the question. So um, let me take, there's another question from Anupam. So let me take that one instead. Which are the other parties who can probably join hands with BJP to arrange magic numbers? Well, the BJP already has its own set of allies. It keeps having some tiffs with these allies, whether it's the Shiv Sena or it's the Akali Dal. Um, but having said that, though, they are still BJP allies and we can expect them to come forth to help the BJP if it needs a certain number of seats post the Lok Sabha election results. Other parties, as I said, BJD has maintained a very neutral stand. So far, it has maintained equidistance from the Congress to the uh, from the Congress and BJP, which is also why the BJP uh, has been careful. Narendra Modi, in his le recent rallies in Orissa, has been careful not to directly target Naveen Patnayak. So BJD. Is it's an option for the uh, for the party. We of course know it has some allies in um, Bihar, which includes Paswan. They are likely to they will they are fighting together with the BJP, so they will be there. Besides that, there are parties in South, for instance, AIA DMK could very well come with the BJP. Uh, it has supported BJP in the past, and it could support the BJP again. We don't know what KCR right now. KCR is talking about an anti BJP front. But he's not really inherently anti-BJP as such. So it's not as if there is no chance of him supporting the BJP. YSR Congress, which is led by Jagan Reddy. Again, we don't know which way that is going to go. It's possible if need be, they may support the BJP. See, the parties which are not traditionally opposed to the BJP, which are not uh, opposed to the whole concept and idea of BJP could support the BJP, except a few parties like the RJD, except a few parties like, of course, um, uh, the Samajwadi party. If there are many parties who are or now even Srinamool Congress, which has really raised its stakes against the BJP as well as and also the left parties. There are parties which are there is a possibility of some other opposition parties coming to the BJP if the situation so demands and if the BJP can lure them. It's also about what the BJP can really offer these parties. Uh, there's a question, why would Indian people believe Congress, which brought in draconian laws like Aadhaar, the Citizen Amendment Bill 2016, unlimited surveillance to agencies, AFSPA? Uh, well, no, it's really not the Congress. The Congress, of course, did create the infrastructure for Aadhaar, but the law was brought in by the BJP. The legal backing was given by the BJP. Citizen Amendment Bill was in 2016, so it was brought in by the BJP. So I'm not sure why you're blaming the Congress for these. Uh, but if you're talking about why the people would really believe the Congress, that, that is, of course, something a huge, which remains a huge challenge for the Congress. It's ruled this country for decades. And just before this BJP government came to power, it was in power for 10 years, um, the last bit of which was characterized by a lot of policy paralysis, corruption charges, flaying government. So the Congress has its task cut out, see, just because it feels that there are people who are getting disillusioned with the BJP or who may be tired of the BJP or who may be angry even with the BJP does not mean these people are automatically going to move to the Congress. Congress is not um, the, the first alternative to the BJP just yet. It hasn't been able to model itself as that in the last five years. So it has a lot of work to do to be able to do that. 
A lot of voters may prefer voting for their own regional party. A West Bengal voter may want to vote for Mamata instead if it does not want to vote for the BJP. Uh, a voter in Uttar Pradesh has the option of voting for the SPBSP alliance. So the fact that you, the question that you ask is why should people believe in the Congress is a fair question and that's something that the Congress has to understand. That's something that the Congress has to, um, you know, it, it has to have a narrative which is not just about criticizing Modi and finding fault with Modi. It has to have a more positive narrative. It has to have its own vision and put forth its own promises. Um, in fact, more so considering a lot of these smaller gadbandhans like the one we saw in UP is leaving the Congress out. So the Congress can't just sit at home thinking that talking about Modi and blaming Modi will bring it votes. It has to put forth its own vision. There's a question, what are the chances of Mayavati going with the BJP? I've uh, spoken about this earlier, but well, technically, since she's fighting with the SP, it's a pre-poll alliance. Um, it, 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 it would be a little difficult later to break ranks because whatever votes you get as an alliance is for the alliance. It's not for one party alone. You know, this Gadbandhan also includes a lot of caste calculations. So if the BSP gets a certain number of seats, it would be because of the alliance as well, not just because of itself. Having said that, there's nothing stopping the BSP from breaking ranks later and going to the BJP if it wants to. BSP has done it in the past and these are parties, as I said, which are not inherently uh, opposed to the BJP. BSP is not inherently opposed to the BJP, so it, it could go. I mean, this is, depends on the party leadership and the situation that emerges. Uh, there's a question which says both Congress as well as regional parties have understood it's better for both not to have a pre-poll alliance. Example, Telangana in 2014, TDP got 15 and Congress 21, while in 2018, after the pre-poll alliance, TDP got 2 and Congress 19. Well, this is a good question. This is also something that has not escaped the eyes of these, uh, uh, these opposition parties. Telangana has been an example that the BJP is also using to talk about how this alliance is not working. Hence, uh, you are right, these opposition parties, a lot are also worried about being seen with the Congress. Maybe at some point they feel, you know, the Congress is bogging them down. The fact that the leadership question will always be about whether Rahul Gandhi will lead, is that bogging them down? Because the BJP will try to make it a Modi versus Rahul Gandhi contest. And if the opposition comes together and Rahul Gandhi is a face, could it cost the opposition? So there are many factors that are in the minds of these regional leaders. These regional leaders also feel that in their own region, voters are going to vote for them, not for the Congress. So why should we come together with the Congress? Um, the Congress also has a slightly non-accommodating attitude as we saw in the recent state elections. Hence, really, um, you are right that the opposition parties may not be entirely convinced about the idea of this big alliance with one Congress at the center of it. Pramod says, uh, time for a non-Congress, non-BJP front. These Brahmin parties have made OBC, SC, ST as football. Uh, UPA is more dangerous to Indians than NDA. Well, non-Congress, non-BJP front seems like a bit of a uh, stretch at this point. Arithmetic really does not quite allow that. You need one party which is going to form the base and the others can add on. And that party has to be a slightly more pan-India party, pan-national party, which has a presence beyond one state because all the other opposition parties that we see have presence in only one state. Of course, it's not an impossibility. Look, 70, as I said, in 80 seats in UP, if uh, SP, BSP managed to get a big stretch and in other regional, other regional parties in their own regions managed to sort of score um, in their states, it could add up, but to add up to 272 takes a lot of seats. It takes a lot of willingness of parties to come together. And you know, you don't have that one single block to hold everybody together. So this seems, as I said, like a bit of a stretch for now. Well, I think we're running out of time, but thank you so much for watching and for sending in your questions.